In a previous video, we talked about how to initially recognize a separately acquired intangible asset. In this video, we'll talk about uh, what if that asset has been acquired in an exchange transaction. Now, what is it, an exchange transaction? An exchange transaction is where we give up an asset to acquire an asset. We give up an asset rather than cash to acquire an asset, which means it's being exchanged. Two assets are being exchanged, right? So how do we initially recognize an exchange transaction? Well, first of all, for example, I'm trying to acquire an intangible asset that is a software and I'm paying, uh, I'm giving up an asset against it. That is my car, right? Imagine that the fair value of that software is $10,000 and the fair value of my car is $9,500. At what value should I recognize that intangible asset? That is the question. So, and also, the carrying value of my car is say $7,000, which means after depreciation, if the, the carrying value, which is currently written in my balance sheet is $7,000. What, at what value should I recognize that software, that intangible asset? Well, the standard setters say that first of all, we have to try to uh, record the uh, asset received at the fair value of the asset given up which in this case is $9,500. What if the fair value of the asset received that the software is more clearly evident? Which means I'm not sure about the fair value of my car, but I'm sure about the fair value of the software. In that case, this intangible asset, the software would be recognized in my books at the fair value of the asset received, which is the software itself. And it makes sense, right? Now, what if the fair value of both the assets cannot be determined, which means the fair value of the software cannot be uh, determined for sure, it's not measured reliably, and the fair value of the car cannot be measured reliably. How should I recognize that intangible asset in that case? Well, according to the standard, if both the fair values cannot be measured reliably, uh, the asset received would be recognized at the carrying amount of the asset given up which in our case is $7,000, right? Now there's one more case in which the, uh, the uh, asset received has to be recognized at the carrying amount of the asset given up. And that case is where the transaction lacks commercial substance. 